So I was a little melancholy today. So much done, so much to do. Um, people have been um, congratulating me for finishing. Um, and actually, Karen, my wife, uh, said, I think you're gonna miss it. Um, I probably will miss some of it. Um, I'm humbled by the words of admiration that I've heard and received about my tenure here. Uh, but as I said, there's much work to be done. My two years as president were overshadowed by the fire in this building and the rebuilding efforts afterwards. That took a tremendous effort on the part of our community, our professional and lay leadership. With time constraints and the desire to provide services, our professional staff, led by Judy Alperin, achieved more than we could have dreamed. So now we're back home in, the, in our community building. The JCC is back functioning. Where do we go from here? I think it's time that we put the fire behind us and look forward. What have we, what have we learned these past two years? What have I learned these past two years about the community? So being out of the building meant spending more time at uh, community venues. It created a sense of community and camaraderie that it allowed us to see the different sides and different assets in our community. Our community is a multifaceted community. You know, we need to acknowledge the diversity and embrace the diversity and let Federation be the platform for constructive discussion. We're a stiff-necked people, but our diversity of ideas should not be the nidus of division. It should be the center of our strength. Our passion should not make us pull away. They should inspire us to work in and for the Jewish community. We may disagree, but we are one people. We need to make this work. It's easy to walk away, but by walking away, very little is accomplished. So we need to get involved. We need to ask to create forums for discussion. We need to try, we need to, try to spark the ideas, our ideas, to educate the community. We need to stay involved and be involved. So I ask you, as we move forward, after the fire. Donate your, re your human resources, and of course, I have to say this, donate your financial resources to Federation. As I leave the presidency, I'm not leaving my community or my passions behind. Jeffrey Hoos is an able leader and a wonderfully communi community-minded person. His mantra of it being about one Jew, talking to another Jew, to help a third Jew, rings in my mind every day. He is the right person to lead us to the next level. I've asked Jeffrey if I can work with the board spearheading initiatives that I had on my agenda but were unable to tackle. These include strategic planning and rewriting the bylaws for the Federation JCC. And I want to thank Jeffrey for the opportunity to help me fulfill those missions and goals that I had for myself two years ago. I want to thank my executive board, my offices, God, the finance committee, and the entire board and in general for their commitment, support, and trust. I want to thank my wife Karen for her understanding and support and encouragement. It is not uh, any little part of hers that I can do what I do for the community. I want to thank the professional staff, and I can't name everybody because I'll miss somebody. They do extraordinary work and go above and beyond, and as was said by Scott Harris, usually with very little, little budget and very little and finally, Judy, you've been an inspiring partner and a wonderful friend. Without you, my job would have been impossible. And quite frankly, you probably did most of my job. It's been a privilege and an honor to serve this community under your guidance. Your endless enthusiasm and optimism, sometimes I think this place, but it's infectious. <laughs> your vision is flawless. May you and this community go from strength to strength. Thank you.
you and ice cream. Uh, but um, we're pretty excited that we're hosting our after party tonight in Cafe 360, and we hope that you'll stick around and schmooze, enjoy a yummy treat, and especially the coffees and coffee drinks that we have available for you tonight in the cafe through Meredith's generosity. This has been uh, a wonderful opportunity tonight to reflect on the enormity of all that we've accomplished together and to celebrate our outstanding community volunteers, young people, and leadership. What may not seem apparent through all of this is the dedicated, hardworking, and talented professionals, but I'm glad they were singled out a few times tonight, who undergird our tremendous enterprise. I would like to draw your attention to the final pages of your annual meeting booklet. In addition to taking a moment to join me in a salute to our staff team, I'd like to point out our color-coded system, which recognizes our employees who have been with us for remarkable careers. Each member of our staff team deserves our appreciation. They have demonstrated remarkable resilience coming through challenging times of the fire, its aftermath, the journey back to our renewed facility. And each one puts the needs of our community members and JCC members first. Will the staff members present tonight please stand and will you all please join me for a very well-deserved round of applause. individuals, congregations, and agencies, and I continue to marvel at Scott Cohen's quiet strength. Neither of us could have predicted what has unfolded, but we make one terrific team. So thank you, Lisa and Scott, for leading the foundation in JCC and making your mark long-lasting and for the benefit of us all. Amy Holtz is not present as she's caring for her ill mother in Florida. But that cannot stop me from acknowledging her remarkable work and announcing Amy's promotion from Director of Development to Chief Development Officer. Amy will continue to build our unique integrated development office as we strive to meet our donors where they are and as we streamline and maximize our fundraising efforts across our integrated enterprise. We are in the final throes of our 2018 campaign and midstream in our capital efforts. And if Amy was here, she'd want me to thank you for all the support that you've given this year and year after year, and remind you that if you haven't yet had a chance to make your annual pledge, that she or I would be happy to speak with you, and you can, I should also, she would say, make a pitch for our capital campaign so that with your help, we can not only pave the way for incredible programmatic and facility improvements that we've made, but also support our community building as it ages. Scott Hurwitz and I would be delighted to speak more about that, too, after the program. So our staff is pretty terrific, but none of us can reach our full potential without volunteer partners. We are blessed to have excellent presidents, chairs, boards, and committees at the Federation Foundation and JCC. And I offer my appreciation and the appreciation of our staff to those who take time away from their families, juggle busy work schedules, and give up themselves with their time, treasure, and talent to push us to be better. Tonight, we are passing the baton of Federation leadership from Dr. Norman Ravsky to Dr. Jeffrey Boos. Our community is so fortunate to have such a strong bench of committed leaders with huge hearts. And I'm looking forward to working closely with Jeffrey continue our forward momentum and to helping him realize his dreams for our community. As I look back on the past three years, Norm Mandrapsky has been with me each step of the way. From my very first moment visiting the search committee under Norman's leadership to Norm's presidency, I've been blessed with the ideal partnership. Norm has been an incredible sounding board, thought leader, compassionate philanthropist, and selfless and committed inspirer. His confidence enabled me to perform beyond what even I knew was possible. I'm thrilled that Norm will lead three key projects in the coming year, which we've heard about a little tonight, and I won't mention them now. So a story was told of a king whose daughter was to be married in three months. 
He sent out invitations to his entire kingdom for everyone to come and celebrate a great wedding feast. He also asked that the guests bring no gifts. All he requested was that each household in the weeks before the wedding should bring a pitcher of their very best red wine to the town square. There he had erected a huge barrel. It was eight feet tall and four feet wide. And during the weeks that led up to the wedding, each household was to bring their pitcher of wine to the barrel, climb up a ladder, open the lid, and pour it in. In this way, when it came time to toast his daughter and her new husband, they would do so using the shared bounty of the entire community. As the weeks and months passed and the wedding day grew closer, a representative from each household came to the town square, climbed up the ladder, opened the lid, and poured in their pitcher into the huge barrel. It slowly filled with each offering until it was almost completely full. Finally, the great day of the wedding had arrived, and the bride and groom stood under the papa, and rings were exchanged, and the glass was broken, and everyone shouted, Mazel tov! And then, at the beginning of the feast, the king prepared to bless the wine and called for the first toast. He held a clear crystal glass up to the tap on the bottom of the barrel. He broke the seal, opened the spigot, and out came a stream of pure water. You see, each townsperson, as they had heard about the king's request, thought to themselves, you know, so many people are contributing to the king's toast, and it's such a huge barrel. If I just pour water in, no one will know the difference. So one by one, thinking that their contribution didn't count, each person poured water, not wine, into the barrel. Well, the moral of the story is obvious, but worth stating. Every member of our community has value. Every one of us has an essential and vital perspective to share. And if each person does not feel as though their contribution is going to make a difference, then in the long run, we're all diminished. So we've heard about some amazing people who contribute to the vitality of our community. And through the slideshow and video, we've seen the remarkable progress we've made to overcome an incredible challenge. Of course, we cannot and do not do it alone. Each one of us has to contribute to the barrel. And some of the special people who contribute are in our partner agencies, the Tier 1 agencies, Camp Laurelwood, Ezra Academy, Jewish Family Service, Southern Connecticut Hebrew Academy, and the Towers, and the leadership of our wonderfully diverse congregations. They all contribute to the vitality and ability to enhance Jewish life here in Greater New Haven. And so now that we've safely arrived on the other side of this momentous past year or so that we've gone through two years, what do we do next? Well, as part of our Shark Tank process, which evaluated our options after the fire and ultimately renewed us to our renewed community building, we committed ourselves to meaningful strategic planning so that we continue to engage our community in the determination of its future. Establishing core priorities and goals that our stakeholders support will be critical toward our communal decision-making process and lay the groundwork for how our Federation will lead moving forward. Over the next 10 months or so, a Strategic Visioning Steering Committee will be established. Following our roadmap of engagement that was successful in our former process, key constituencies will be engaged in targeted focus groups led in part by community consultants we've engaged through our alliance with Jewish Federations of North America. We hope to facilitate town halls and employ a community survey so to ensure maximum participation of all of our community's voices. This process, we hope, will result in our roadmap for the next five to seven years in a climate that is dynamic and changing. Jewish communities throughout North America are experiencing dramatic shifts, both in demographics and affiliation. The challenges facing communities today are existential. What creates a reason for belonging and participation when we have total freedom of choice as Jews in 21st century America? While we will always have a role as the frontline defender of rights and freedoms for our people in this climate of increasing hate, this cannot be the primary reason for affiliation or the defining reason for federation. As our dear friend and past JCC president, Bob Felice, is fond of saying, why the buy? Hopefully, the process we are about to undertake will present us with at least four key actionable priorities 
that will drive our allocations and grant making process, as well as define the organization we need to be and should be to be relevant and successful in 21st century New Haven. Challenges will continue to come our way. And as we build on our hub and spoke efforts to provide services, programs, and opportunities to connect, I know that we will become stronger and that together we will overcome any challenges that may arise. After all, it's our mantra here that challenges are opportunities because we make lemonade from lemons. So I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some of my thoughts, express my gratitude for this incredible opportunity to serve you and to serve our community. And thank you so much. And Mateo, go and enjoy our after party.